juvenile idiopathic arthritis, formerly known as juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, is the most common type of arthritis in children under the age of 16, affecting one or more joints. It is an autoimmune disease. This means the body's immune system attacks its own healthy cells and tissues. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis can cause persistent joint pain, swelling, and stiffness. Some children may experience symptoms for only a few months, while others have symptoms for many years. Some types of juvenile idiopathic arthritis can cause serious complications, such as growth problems, joint damage, and eye inflammation. Today, on your favorite health TV talk show, the physicians will be talking about juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Do stay tuned. It's another day on your favorite health TV talk show, the physicians, where your health is our business. Today on the show, we'll be talking about juvenile idiopathic arthritis. My name is Dr. Ramona Yusuf Kadri, and of course, you always know that my co-host, who is the ever-lovely and delectable. My name is Dr. Martina Agberi, and welcome to the Physicians, where your health is our business. Thank you, Ramona. Thank you very much. You look great. Thank you. You too. You <laughs> look really radiant. Yeah. Look, so, like I tended to wear more natives this day, right? Okay. Proudly Nigerian. I'll join you soon. Buy Nigerian, use Nigerian, wear Nigerian. Well done. <laughs> That's how we roll. That's how it is. So today we're talking about juvenile idiopathic arthritis. I know it sounds like a mouthful, like juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Each time I hear the word idiopathic, medical school just comes. Yeah, we are right. Idiopathic. It's as if the causes are known. You know, and it's it's now with juvenile, we know that's an for age group thing, yeah. and it's for children. Yeah. Now we are now attaching it to arthritis. Right. Any experience? Yes, you want to say experience somehow, um, or a case that was quite interesting. Not even a case. Uh, it, 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 actually triplets. Oh. One, one of the the the, elder, the elders are the triplets, okay, and um, luckily the father is. Um, a medical doctor. doctor. So when the baby was born, they realized they called it a. Um, so what they had, had to do with the foot. Okay, the genesis so, yeah, yeah, exactly. and all this. Truffle, and whatever. So they put they put um, some splints on the child, but they spread the last of the triplets. Yeah, the second of them. They, after a while, they said. She has uh, arthritis. And yeah, everyone was like, say, baby. how can a child baby have arthritis? <laughs> they did not even uh, uh, they know. said, if you look at her foot, they had flat foot. We were oh. just different experiences. reasons. At the end of the day, they actually said, it's what you call the juvenile arthritis. So they had that, had not explained. Then I was still very young. I was in medical school. So you they just had to explain. I surprised. was surprised. They said, I, I tried this. Is this of the ages? So why is it baby? Yeah, they 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 coming from heaven with that yes. I like the fact that you are still, yeah. have, we, we are starting with this Case story you are sharing with yeah. us. And of, we have a... I think what, we, what we, I think what we should do is, when the guest comes, because that is her thing, we'll ask her, well, have you felt any experience, experience before? Yeah. Let's not shout too much. Let's not shout too much. Let's not shout too much. Not shout too much. Okay. We'll be right back after this time. This gets ready. Every day and in every way, enjoy that I find support. No matter the role you play, you dream back supplement for you and me in your body. Darabite hey. Nutritional Supplement is loaded with essential multivitamins, minerals, and natural ingredients that helps you to be at your best. Darabite from LB Pharma. Darabite, love yourself. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is your favorite health TV talk show, The Physicians, where your health is our business. With us in the studio today is the amazing, we call her a walking encyclopedia. Like, literally, she's the only Nigerian, I want to repeat it, the only Nigerian that is a consultant pediatric 
rheumatologists. So, you know, on, on, on this show, we bring you the very best. And today we have somebody who's supposed to be in a museum, but she's right here with us. So, please, tell someone to tell someone to tell someone to tell. Bring all your labels, because we'll be discussing a very important topic, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. And no other person is going to do justice to that than our lovely, amazing Dr. Ayodele Faleye, a consultant so pediatric rheumatologist from Lagos State University teaching us. You're welcome again. Welcome, Dr. It looks Fale. so beautiful. Black, Black is, is beautiful. beautiful. Like your melanin pumping is just... Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you well, so no, much. You're doing uh, pediatric rheumatologist in Lagos? So in Nigeria. In Nigeria. In Nigeria. As, at now. as at now. And uh, the first consultant pediatric rheumatologist in the field of uh, pediatric rheumatology in West Africa. In West Africa. Yes. How many are you in West Africa? Are you? Uh, only are two. two. Yeah, two in West Africa. And she's only one print. Practicing. I think you are supposed to actually be in the museum, right? That is it. I just said it. I right don't have any idea. <laughs> you are not nursing anything or like you want to leave the country? No, she can't. We will not allow her. Ah. We will share her picture everywhere. Right. The she immigration, everybody needs to know. <laughs> so we can't allow you to go. Dr. Fale, once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Know, you. We, today we say we are talking about juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Can you share with us a case you've experienced recently? Because I think that's where we want to start this conversation. Yes. Okay, um, thank you very much for that uh, warm welcome. Um, yes, I think I had a case um, about three weeks ago. That's quite emotional for me okay. and for the mom. Um, we had um, an 11 year old girl that uh, that's, had been complaining of joint pain and joint swelling since the age of four. Okay. They've been to everywhere. They've been to the orthopedic clinic. They've been to several private hospitals, and then they were told that she's going to have to go the pain and the swelling. Um, a year ago, the vision became poor. She's been to so many uh, optical center with no clue until she came to our clinic. So it was in the clinic while, when we examined that, that we diagnosed her with a juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Seven but years seven, after. Seven Jeez. years after, with a complication. And okay. that is with the high, which we call chronic uveitis. Oh, wow. So um, what we did was to manage the arthritis and we referred to the ophthalmologist. And we're able, we are working towards salvaging the vision as much as we can. Because she's just 11. She's just 11. And, you know, the mom is very proactive. She's been everywhere. It's only that the diagnosis was not clear. What's far is that? Oh, well, it's because we do not have uh, so much uh, knowledge about all these diseases. When we talk about arthritis, what we'll be thinking about old but women, uh, not um, especially women. You know, most um, mothers, once they are aging, they age with arthritis. We have men too with arthritis. But most people will tell you that how can a child have arthritis at that age? At that age. But arthritis um in these children is usually autoimmune we've um, seen um literatures on ch of children that are just three months old with arthritis you know a baby less than a year with arthritis it's been documented in literature all this can happen that means we need to have high index of suspicion so what is arthritis yes. and yeah. what is the now, difference what, between yes what is arthritis when you talk about arthritis, what so you are saying is... To think when you say arthritis, the disease of the bones, the disease of exactly. the elderly. So what is this arthritis? Uh, thank you for that question. Arthritis, when you say arthritis, you are referring to the joints. Okay. It could be the large joint or the small joint. All our fingers, you know, they have joints. A joint yeah. is everywhere. And the knees are joints. The ankles are also joints. You know, we have two, two everywhere. The wrists are joints, the elbows yeah. and the shoulders. So what, when you say arthritis, you are referring to the joints. And what has happened to the joints? That means it is swollen, okay. it is painful, it could be warm, and the individual is unable to make use of that joint. For instance, let's assume the wrist, the child is unable to write very well in school. A child that cannot even, you know, probably find it difficult to button the, the, shirt, the shirt. shirt. Yes, because the small joint of the fingers, they are all swollen. Okay. Even to carry spoon to the mouth when they are eating could be difficult. Then another one that could, uh, you know, be so uh, painful is that one of the jaw, the temporal mandibular joint. Okay. Yes. Really open the mouth well. Yes. So we, we've seen children in the clinic before that can no more take bolus. 
they are, they are, yes, they have to be on a liquid, liquid diet, diet because they can't even open chew. their mouth to it's swallow true. or chew. Mm -hmm. That may become difficult because there is a joint there and uh, it has been inflamed over the years yes. till complication, disability or deformity sets in and that joint is no more useful to the child. So it's always good to diagnose them on time. Yeah. Okay, and so that is why it is it's key that we're having this discussion, you know, because we are not just talking about general arthritis now. Yes. We are narrowing it down to juvenile, juvenile. that yes. meaning children. And yes. we've said here, and we've just also emphasized it, it's autoimmune, yes. meaning the body is fighting its own self. Yes. So how do they present? Now, um, let me even define that uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. I think it's very important. We call it JIE. If I the name sounds so... <laughs> So that we don't keep, uh, keep pronouncing <laughs> it word by, by word. Because you say JIA, you're already on so and you know it's a universal you know, acronym for that. Yeah. That's fine. It's acceptable. JIA. It's acceptable. Sure. What you are saying, whenever you, someone tells you, I have JIA, that means the child is, you know, I said a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means the child has um, joint swelling that has lasted for at least six weeks. And the age must be less than 16 years. That means an individual less than 16 years with joint swelling, pain, one differential one or loss of function for at least six weeks after you must have excluded all the common causes of joint swelling. Joint swelling could be due to trauma. I fell down when I was, you know, though that could be a red herring. You know, yeah, that could precede true. that, yes, yes in some of our patients, yes. That could be a red herring. Then, you know, we have something we call septic arthritis that could be caused by bacteria. We see that in some children. Then also it could be caused by viral infections. Even HIV, children with HIV, they can have joint swelling. TB, they can have joint swelling. swelling. So you must have excluded common causes of arthritis because JIA is a diagnosis of exclusion. True. You have looked around, you can't find any other cause. And that is why it is idiopathic, unknown cause. You have looked around for all the causes that you know about. You can't find any. Okay. So you are free to diagnose that child with a GIE. Okay. So that is the, you know, definition. definition. Yes. So what is, the, what, is the difference, what is the difference between GIE exactly. and, and rheumatoid arthritis? With yes. RA. Yes. <laughs> the RA is for the howdots. Okay. Um, so for us, it's RA. For our <laughs> children, is JIA. For our children, is JIA. So our audience will immediately understand where we are. Yes, from. when you say rheumatoid arthritis, yes. you know, when, once you say that, I know you are talking about an how yes, yes. And um, some of these are our children that we are managing um, as cases of a JIA. They will move to the adult yes, side. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Actually, well, by the time they start clocking 17, they have to move from pediatric clinic to the adult. Yes. That is if. Um, the arthritis do not resolve. So, if, it, if it is still ongoing and active, you know, there are some uh, uh, criteria to look out for. If that arthritis is still very active, then you need to move to the adult side and by that time, they will label them to have rheumatoid arthritis. arthritis. It's no more juvenile. Okay. Though yeah. it is part of the history that is started as a child. child. Yes. Okay. It's quite so interesting. It's really interesting. But remember, you just talked about um, from the juvenile and yes. you move to the rheumatoid yes. arthritis. For adults, right? Yes. If the, it doesn't resolve within that age bracket, yes. if the child crosses 16 and goes to 17, yes. it's likely that he comes down with the rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. So really, what are now the trigger factors, the, the risk factors, and possible causes? Because yeah. if, yeah. if you are not able to resolve, resolve it, them, yeah. then it means um, something is still going on. Yes. The, and the taking a person so active. Um, you know, the cause is unknown. But um, it's been documented that uh, some individuals have um, genetic susceptibility. Oh, it's going on in some family. years. Um, you know, one of the risk factors is being a female. Ah, a, yes, a girl female child is, is more common in females. And uh, another thing is that uh, once there is a first degree relative with any of these autoimmune diseases, um, one can come down with a juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Relative, like yes, like the mother, father, mother. mother. Let's okay. assume that the father or the mother has maybe a rheumatoid arthritis. Probably okay. they started as a child too. Okay. And now, you know, they can have a child with juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Or probably they have some other autoimmune disorders like um, the connective tissues, like juvenile sy systemic lupus 
erythematosus it's possible to have a child with this so um, that is one of uh, the risk factors then you know we have uh, environmental factors you know exposure to some viral infections can cause a trigger in some people you know that already have the genetic uh, susceptibility then exposure to chemicals too some have said um, like um, uh, petroleum distillate pesticides and stuff like that in genetically susceptible man being you know all this can be um, trigger factor to juvenile idiopathic arthritis but otherwise the cause is unknown because we've seen we've had patients in clinic who had no relative with this who had no prior viral infections and yeah. yet they came down with uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis so okay. if if for uh, because before we before now you said something about aside from that case of that young you know um girl who for at the age of four then we got to the age of 11 before mm -hmm. she was diagnosed please share with us because we are both doctors here there are many other doctors that are watching listening to us and there are more doctors that will come stumble on this video and watch it educate us at what time stage should you refer, refer or even a high index of subscription high index also to refer to somebody like because with what I've, i'm hearing from you now age 16 years below with joint swelling up to six i will not even bother go okay. and meet dr fale you know so educate us on at what should we look out for look out for? just look out for joint swelling look out for joint swelling you know that is persistent okay keeps coming back you know a child with joint swelling and um, um let me tell you we have several types all right. Maybe that will now lead us to what to look out for. Yeah. All right, there, great. There, there, you know, there are seven types of juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Seven. Yes. Okay. Something that doesn't have a cause. But three are cause most, unknown. Yes, but three are most common. Okay. okay. You see, the, the first two has to do with the number of joints that are affected, and their ah. complications are different. Okay. You know, the first we call one oligoarticular. That means maximum number of joints involved are four. Not okay. more than four. More than it usually four. affects large joints, especially those of the lower limbs, those of the leg. Legs. Let me use that. Knees, the knees, the ankle. ankle. So let's say the two knees, the two ankles. I'll say this is oligoarticular. Then we now have one, polyarticular. That one affects five or more. Those are the ones that we affect all the, the large joints, the, the small, small joints, joints, the fingers, the temporal, mat, the jaw joints joint. that I mentioned the other time. Um, that is that one. You see, these children, they are otherwise well children. Oh. The only problem they have the is with the joints. They just say, I have joint pain. You know, sometimes they don't even know that this is swollen. It is the doctor that will see that this is swollen. swollen. Especially because most of the joints are, you know, two. You know, we have one side, side, right side, side left side. side. When you compare, you will be able to see all that is a there, difference. That there's a difference. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, well, child walking to the clinic limping. So it doesn't affect the child at the same time. It may, it may affect okay. the two at the same time. Sometimes it may affect the two at the same time. But for that only go at it, maybe the two knees. Yes. yes. So when they come in, they are playing otherwise well child, except for the fact that you can also see, see. that there is a problem. Uh -huh. So you need to take it straight to be able to know. But the, there is a third type we call systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis. That one is associated with fever. Oh. They are pale. They are very sick children. Mm -hmm. They have joint swelling. They, they, they can have some uh, difficulty with their breathing. Any child with joint pain, even if it is not swollen, after some time, refer to the rheumatologist. That is actually the idea to do. Exactly. Exactly. For instance, I, I feel so pain for that uh, case study oh, yeah, that you, you talked about, the four year old, yes. after seven years. Yes. And so, it was as if the parent didn't even do anything. Yes. That's they kept going from hospital part. to yes. hospital. Yes. So it was the only was actually on the doctor to actually say, hey, for a child, go to a uh, six weeks yes. at this age, that is classical. Probably yes. because most people do not really, it's not so common around, I don't want to say the word not common, mm. just the index of suspicion. Sure. You know what you refer? Yes. Unfortunately, this parent was in a learned person. So yeah. who can actually blame the parent? She did her best. Yes. Not the ones that probably will be taking the child to try yes. for massage, continuous massage. Yes. And so yeah. yes. So be that as it may, now you've talked about the trigger factors, you yes. about the causes. Yes. So how people are waiting. Now we have heard all this. Yes. Before it moves this child to becoming that uh, has a rheumatoid arthritis, what are the management yeah. methods available? 
how is it diagnosed and how can manage uh, management be treated? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. So now for juvenile idiopathic arthritis, diagnosis is usually clinical. There is no specific investigation that you you need to do to tell you that this is juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Once you take your history, very well detailed history, you'll be able to say this is this. But do we still do some laboratory investigations? Yes, we do. We do to strengthen our clinical findings. Mm -hmm. Yes, and probably to be able to say this is the type. You know, we have um, like the polyarticular, we have subtypes under poly. So we have types, types, types. It is not meant for this kind of discussion. So we do some investigations to be able to find out, okay, this is the type that this person has. And that may even be able to tell us that, okay, maybe this will resolve over time. Or maybe this is a child that we grow into adulthood uh, with this um, disease. Now for treatment, we have medications. Okay. In fact, if they present early, we don't need to give them um, oral medications. We can do what we call joint injections, especially if, uh, if it is limited to few joints. Let's imagine just one joint, two joints. If, if there is any presentation, we have injections that we can, you know, uh, administer into the joint that will make, you know, the swelling and the inflammation going on there to resolve over time. But, you know, in this environment, most of our patients present late because yeah. there are painkillers everywhere. Yeah. It's not possible to have true, a patient within true. six weeks. To, no, most yeah. times they present when deformities have set in that is not reversible. Yeah. So most times we do systemic medications and uh, we have what we call disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs include, we, um, the, um, and what we call steroids. steroids These are yeah. what we administer to these uh, children okay. for the management. I, I like the fact that we are bringing back, you know, Talking about the management and you know what we need, um, what parents need to know yes. because it's not all about straight surgery or it yes. has to be yes. some big focus uh, you yes. know um, um, kind of treatment presentation is, is very um, key. Yes. So for our last words mm. to our audience out there, especially to us as doctors mm. and. Uh, to parents, Definitely. what will you yes, you're say? Talking, you're only talking about the last word, word last word, right? I would you talk about the complications, yes, last yes, words. the com possible complications because yes. I heard you talk about deformities, right? Yes, and from the case that you also talked about, you talk about the child's nose and the sight, yeah. yes. So maybe we need to know more about the, uh, the complications, yes, then in, in the last word, last yes. Word. We have what we call limb length discrepancy. You find out that most times, most the joint, the, the leg that is affected, let's assume the legs are affected, you know, what we call lower limb. Mm. The community yeah. calls it as leg. Mm. You will find out that the one that is affected is longer than the normal one. Why? Yes, because there is increased blood supply to that joint around that area, which oh. increases its growth, the growth around that side. So you find out that the child is limping, the affected joint right. is, you know, longer than the other one. Then sometimes, you know, it could be uh, complete or, perma or total um, disability. We've had children that presented to us on wheelchairs before. They're unable to stand, they're unable to walk, they're unable to, you know, twist their neck. They're unable to look at the back or the right or the, yes, completely. You know, it's been it's been ongoing for eight years. It doesn't have anyone to present. I'm sure it was just massaging. Yes. Yeah. So another thing is growth failure. You know, when you yeah. have a 14 year old yeah. looking like a five year old, because all the joints, you know, contractures. You know, like a fixed flexion deformity. That's what we call it. They're not. They're not. So the child will not grow, and it's difficult to achieve their adult potential yeah. if they do not present early. To the doctor. Your last what question. is the role of massage? Well, we do not do massage for these children. <laughs> yes, because I just want to, I want to recall, a lot of people will just tell you go for mas massage. No, we do not do for massage. Go for massage. Sometimes we want them to even go for physiotherapy. Yeah. After we must have come, you know, you, we, we must so have, you know, treated them and you are you are winning with the chronic inflammation you feel that the child is much more stable now then you will now commence physiotherapy because you don't want to increase their pain ignorance yeah. is actually yeah. a disease, ignorance yes, is you, a have disease. To, you have to tackle that chronic inflammation before you now even start to talk about physiotherapy yeah. and to the physiotherapist you you write a note note to what let you want. them know yes, exactly don't what, they, what pain, pain on the child thank you so. so much there's no role of massage there's no role for massage even if we have to refer to the physiotherapist, it goes with a note yes. to specify exactly what you want them to achieve, not to inflict more pain on that child. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Palette. you so much. To our audience out there, you heard it. We bring on board every time 
on your favorite health TV talk show, the physicians, the best of the very best, to hear first-hand information. And today, on the show, we talked about juvenile idiopathic arthritis. This is arthritis that affects children 16 years below. And so that means children can have arthritis. And if they don't present on time, it could come down with complications. With the case we just discussed on set today, the, the young girl is getting blind. And so, if you ever have any index or suspicion, a child with joint swelling at least six weeks and ongoing, please let that child see a doctor. And today you've heard that the child can actually see a pediatric consultant rheumatologist. And Dr. Pale is one of them. My name is Dr. Melina Isokadri. Until next time. Remain so again, I just want to say thank you for coming on our program and uh, very, very uh, happy to have you, the, 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 the only pediatric rheumatologist. And I'm sure we'll still invite you again. And to our viewers out there, I'm sure you actually had, I don't want to use the word fun, you got enlightened today, hearing it from the, from the very, uh, 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 very intel intelligent guests. Please do not go for massage unless you are referred by a rheumatologist. If you have that child that has had this problem, swelling, for over six weeks, you don't even need to wait for six weeks. Maybe you notice the swelling and it's not resolving. Don't massage. Don't begin to use hot water to, to massage the area. Don't put that child near fire. Just go and see a specialist. On this, I want to say thank you for being part of our program. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platform. On YouTube, we have a lot of our past episodes which you can actually binge on. Instead of going on following other news items, fake news that is not going to impact positively on you. Till next time, my name is Dr. Atsina Agmeria. Have a blessed day. Every day and in every way, enjoy that I find support. No matter the role you play, you dream back supplement for you and me. Your body. Hey. Your body. Your body. Nutritional Supplement is loaded with essential multivitamins, minerals, and natural ingredients that helps you to be at your best. Darvite from LB Pharma. Darvite, love yourself. Darvite, love yourself.